Having grown up with his every move being followed, Prince William was determined to spend his student years away from the media spotlight and without the trappings of royal life. The ancient town of St Andrews on the east coast of Scotland seemed the perfect choice. Small, remote, and with a close-knit student community. It also laid claim to being Britain's top matchmaking university. It is, in winter, a kind of drich place, meaning grey and rainy and wet and cold. But it's also quite a magical place because it has the ruins of the cathedral, it has the old buildings of the university, it has the golf course, which is world famous, the royal and ancient. It is a magical place where people can find the love of their lives. William's main concern was the size of the swimming pool because he was into water polo at the time. And I was able to assure him that St Andrews had a decent-sized swimming pool. I also informed him that St Andrews was full of uh, beautiful and very bright young women, and I'm sure that's what clinched it. The small university town of St Andrews had never seen anything like it. Prince William greeted like a local hero as he arrived with his father. It was hoped that after the initial excitement of his arrival, the media would leave William to study in peace. There was an agreement, a gentleman's agreement, between the palace and the press that they would leave him alone to study without endless intrusion from paparazzi photographers. You know, when we did this agreement, I never thought it would stick because I know the British media uh, and they can't help themselves. But I suspect that they did have the memory of Diana uh, in their minds and of her tragic end and of the way she had been constantly hounded by the paparazzi. I don't think the British media wanted another Diana on its hands. This historic agreement between the palace and the press meant that William would have the chance to spend his university years as just another student, albeit a very famous one. He's a very normal, very down-to-earth kind of guy, and, um, you know, he's sort of easily mistaken for just being another sort of one of your mates, which, which he was, really. <laughs> His sort of position and his title didn't really mean anything. He was just one of the lads. I do all my own shopping. Um, you know, I go out, and get, take away, you know, do rent videos, go to the cinema, just basically anything, anything I want to really, um, I can go to. William would spend his first year living in St. Salvatore's Halls of Residence, known locally as Sally's. And it was here that he and Kate Middleton would finally meet. I was in the room next door to Kate's in first year on the Girls' E Floor Corridor in Sally's. I think the, the first thing that any of us noticed about her was just how attractive she was. She was known as Beautiful Kate almost from day one. Everyone gets their nicknames in the hall and yeah, she was Beautiful Kate. The first time they met was on their way down to breakfast. The students would take breakfast in a canteen. William was part of a clique called the Sally's Boys, several friends from Eton and friends that he'd made at St Andrews. And he'd noticed this gorgeous girl come in for breakfast and eventually he plucked up the courage to invite Kate to join him and the Sally's Boys. I actually went bright red when I met you and sort of scuttled off, feeling very shy about about meeting you, but um, it did take a bit of time for us to get to know each other, but we did become very close friends from, from quite early on. I think she did stand out because she was the only girl sort of selected to be in, in this kind of privileged group of William and his Eton friends. I think there were girls at St Andrews who had sort of planned in the back of their minds this sort of fairy tale Thing, that they were going to meet Prince William and then get together with him and then end up marrying him. And I'm sure there were girls like that. Um, I don't think Kate was one of them at all. We were friends for over a year first and it just sort of blossomed from then on. We just spent more time with each other and had a, a good giggle, had lots of fun and realised we shared the same interests and just, you know, had a really good time. And in terms of, you know, their social life, they went to some of the more upmarket bars in St Andrews, Mabel's a popular drinking location for them. I can remember Kate having to be carried back to her room by one of the Eaton boys because she couldn't walk and she, you know, she was 
drunk. And on another occasion, I remember William coming back and falling into a bush outside Sally's and having to be retrieved by his bodyguards who, rumour has it, went round the hall to retrieve the, the camera film from people who'd been taking photos. At this stage, though, William and Kate remained just good friends. But they were spending an increasing amount of time in each other's company. And it wasn't long before Kate came to the attention of the press. They may have vowed to respect William's privacy at St Andrews, but they did have their spies. The first pictures that I got of Prince William and uh, Kate Middleton were coming to the end of their first year at university. I literally bumped into them on the street and went back to my car and got maybe about 30 frames. quite a bit of excitement. Nobody knew who this girl was. There was then considerable interest throughout the press of people trying to find out who she was, what, what her background was, what her parents did, everything. Nobody really wanted to be the person who said, yeah, we're going to print this. The newspapers didn't publish it. But just a few weeks later, a photo of William's new friend came along that was simply too good for the tabloids to resist. In March 2002, Kate was asked to be a catwalk model in a student fashion show. Of course, William was keen to go along and show his support. The fashion show in 2002 was still quite small, so it was, whole, it was um, being held at the Students' Union. We were involved during the hair, as we did every year. The atmosphere backstage was just electric, you know, just everybody heard that Prince William was there. There was sort of 20 or 30 of us, a big group of people, and we had a few tables and got quite drunk, and it was a, it was a great night. Will was there watching, and Kate was up on the catwalk looking amazing and certainly turned uh, quite a lot of heads. But there was one outfit in particular that would be remembered from that evening a see-through dress designed by a fashion student. I had to do coursework based on the brief um, Art of Seduction, which is quite apt. It was knitted on my knit machine in my then bedroom. Didn't think anything of it then. A couple of years later, I got a call from the organiser of the charity fashion show asking me to submit a few pieces up to St Andrews. when Kate put on that see-through dress. Charlotte Todd's student design project made fashion history. Well, she was just gorgeous, you know. She came out and she just did her walk. She had this beautiful elegance. And suddenly, this sort of butterfly emerged from the chrysalis, as it were. She did the walk. She caught William's eye and it was like something had just gone off in his brain and he suddenly noticed that this rather cute, friendly, charming girl who he'd gotten to know over lectures and at breakfast was actually a real hottie. It shows confidence to, to show your underwear in front of people and knowing that a prince is there as well, I think that she may, may have known what she was doing. And whether she did or not, it worked. So. <laughs> For their second year at university, William and Kate shared a house in one of St Andrew's most exclusive streets, renting a top floor apartment with two other friends. It was here that their romance blossomed. But it would be another 18 months before the relationship was revealed in the press. When the couple were photographed together on a skiing holiday in the Swiss Alps. There was a picture of William and Kate on the tow bar, and the editor said, uh, Clarence House, uh, don't, know what, don't want us to run this picture, but if I find out that these are an item, we're going to run it. Today's edition of The Sun dedicates its first five pages to a story about the prince's alleged romance with a fellow student, 
The girl, said to be the Prince's first serious girlfriend, is Kate Middleton. She is a flatmate of the Prince at St Andrews. There wasn't to be any more denying after that because it was a picture for everyone to see. This was a couple and Wills gets his girl, I think, was the headline. And he had, but the truth was, he'd had her for quite a time. Kate and William graduated from St Andrews a year later. William Wales. With some well-known faces in attendance. The graduation itself was a fairly intense experience because I think like most young people, you know, the family was there. And I suspect that most folk want their grannies to be at the graduations. It's just in this case, the granny was the queen. Catherine Middleton. Kate's life was going to change unbelievably. She was a sort of a normal girl who went to Marlborough College and suddenly she, we knew even then she was going to become one of the most photographed women in the world. After the relationship became public, suddenly the pressure was on. She was the young woman many said would be queen, but no longer. They knew that that was going to be the greatest test of their relationship. 2005, William and Kate's romance had flourished in the relative privacy of St Andrews. Life after university and a move to London would bring a whole new set of challenges. When William and Kate graduated, they knew that that was going to be the greatest test of their relationship and that if they could withstand life outside that safe bubble of St Andrews, that they probably would last. After the relationship became public, everything changed. Uh, Kate had to deal with being public property in some way. Their, their relationship was under scrutiny. Suddenly, the pressure was on. While William attended the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst, Kate came in for criticism for struggling to find a career of her own. It was difficult for Kate to really cement an identity for herself. They had to go into the real world. The real world involved him trying to f become, um, pass out and get all his military training out of the way, and her somehow trying to forge a career, um, which she didn't really do. She worked part-time so that she could spend more time with him. But life as the girlfriend of the future king came at a cost. Kate's every decision was scrutinised, her every move followed by photographers. I think any girl who's going to marry into the royal family has to stand back and think, yeah, OK, it's going to be a life of great privilege, but I'm also saying goodbye to life as I know it, to privacy, and to most of the rules and regulations that I've lived by. Things reached breaking point on the 9th of January 2007. When Kate woke up on her 25th birthday, she found a throng of photographers gathered on her doorstep. And there'd been a whole lot of sort of wave of speculation that an engagement announcement was imminent. And on her birthday, there were masses of photographers outside her flat. Uh, and it was a bit of a scene reminiscent to the old days of Diana. <laughs> Kate probably got her first taste of the really negative side of what it meant to be a public person. The cliche about being a princess is that it's something that uh, every little girl dreams of. I think the reality is that it's a tough role. It's a very, very public role. Um, she's going to be scrutinised the world over. With William devoted to army life and seemingly reluctant to settle down, the strain on the relationship was beginning to show. William had just joined the Blues and Royals, a regiment in the Household Cavalry, which is known as the Booze and Royals for their love of partying. And, and I think he needed to have some time to be a young man and go out and drink and flirt. She was the young woman many said would be queen, but no longer. Prince William and his girlfriend Kate Middleton have split up. ITV News can reveal it was a mutual decision, and although they've broken up before, this time it is final. From what we can glean about it, Kate wanted a greater commitment from William than he was prepared to give at that stage. To her eternal credit, Kate 
didn't run away um, and crawl away into a hole and hide. She came out fighting. She was pictured uh, going to nightclubs. She joined an all-women charity team who was rowing across the channel and was looking Amazonian, uh, steering a, a boat along the Thames. I, at the time, wasn't very happy about it, but actually it made me a stronger person. You find out things about yourself that maybe you hadn't realised. I really valued that time for me as well, although I didn't think it at the time. It was all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Wembley Stadium, 1st of July 2007. On what would have been Princess Diana's 46th birthday, William and Harry hosted a special tribute concert for their mother. Backstage, the princes rubbed shoulders with hip-hop royalty and the recently reformed Take That. But rumors were growing of another eagerly anticipated reunion. There was a lot of speculation about whether Kate and William were back together as an item. And the day before the concert, I asked William whether he would be inviting Kate uh, well, uh, yeah, I've got lots you, of friends coming. Comment on this yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> I've got lots of friends coming, so you know everyone's going to be there on the night, and, and it's going to be a great night, basically. That's so very well avoided, to. William. <laughs> very diplomatic. And he sort of batted away the question, but then the next day, Kate did turn up. Although she was sitting several rows behind William and standing next to her brother, they were back together. And when she was seen mouthing the lyrics back for good. It was very significant. And shortly after that concert, William whisked Kate away to De Roche in the Seychelles, and that was their make or break holiday. That is where they decided that they were going to stay together, and William and Kate made a secret pact that he would make her his wife, but that he needed to finish his military training first. I think the brilliant thing about the relationship between Kate and William is that it's founded on friendship, um, and that is the sound basis for, for any marriage. And another really good thing is that they've had their divorce already, which in royal circles is a terribly wise thing to do. <laughs> It's official, there will be a royal wedding next year. After months of speculation, Clarence House has announced that Prince William and Kate Middleton are engaged. There had been wedding rumours ever since Kate and William left St Andrews, but the official announcement finally came in November 2010. The nation prepared to celebrate the most eagerly awaited royal occasion in 30 years. The couple who met at university over eight years ago became engaged last month during a private holiday in Kenya. We had a little private time um, away together with some friends and I just decided that it was the right time really. I took her up somewhere nice in, uh, in Kenya and uh, I proposed. It was a total shock when it came and very excited. <laughs> I think the idea of him taking that ring and packing it up and putting it in his backpack and traveling all the way across to Africa with his mother's diamond and sapphire engagement ring is, is hugely romantic. It's my mother's engagement ring. This is my way of keeping her sort of close to it all. I think it's really poignant that William has chosen to give Kate his mother's ring. Obviously, it's a hugely symbolic uh, piece of jewellery, and it's, it's quite a thing for Kate to bear. Every day, they'll look at that and uh, know it belongs to his mother. So she's kind of always there and uh, always in his mind because she was a fantastic mother. Whether it was fate or pure chance that first brought them together at St Andrews, when Kate met William, it was a moment that would not only change their lives, but would mark the beginning of a new chapter in royal history. The monarchy needs this boost. It needs a new, young, glamorous couple of figureheads for people to embrace. And the signs are that Kate and William are, are going to do very well. They are people that can appeal not only to the television, not only to the newspapers, but they are a royal couple for the Facebook generation, where they'll be seen to be the face of a new British monarchy. The House of Windsor has had its fair share of divorces and separations and scandal, and here we have this young, 
couple who seem absolutely devoted to one another and I think it's something rather special. We're hugely excited and you know, we're looking forward to spending the rest of our lives together um, and uh, seeing what the future holds.